Did you write the lyrics to that song? Definitely, I write everything in terms of lyrics. Uh, Teddy Riley always helps with the music. This time we had used me and myself, Lil David Mouse, and a couple of friends from New Jersey. Yeah, what made you sit down and write a song called God Made Me Funky? Um, I have a, a theory, like I say, um, first of all, everything is possible, made possible by God, definitely. And I, I use the theory, I say, when I write, he speaks to me. When I speak, he speaks through me. So I'm just giving it, like, just the credit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, every uh, every time you're here and, and you've been here a lot, I get a call from my producer's mom, Mar Marla's mom, will always say, Why doesn't he take his glasses uh -oh. off? So can... <laughs> see his eyes. He's such a bright young man. I'd love to see his eyes. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, we got crowd control. You're not going to start booing up. Yeah. Let me explain the science. Uh, uh, I spend more time being myself, you know. I, I don't really consider myself a star or celebrity. I just consider myself an entertainer with some publicity and popularity. And uh, when I want to shop and go out and stuff like that, if I take the shades off and all of this leather and, and put on a baseball hat, I can walk around in peace and nobody knows who I am. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the way to take focus. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So we really don't know what you look like. True. Except for my interview friends. Yeah. Okay. Um, Fresh Prince. Uh, formerly of Jazzy Jeff, Fresh Prince fame, he's doing a television series. Will you step off and do a television series? Uh, eventually, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm definitely planning on getting into uh, films and things like that. As a matter of fact, I'm writing movie scripts right now. You know, I'd rather write my own roles as opposed to get, you know, placed in certain areas and try to fit, fulfill what somebody wants me to do, whatever. And right now, we have a movie we're in the works on right now called Five O. We'll be uh, shooting that, I guess, after the summer, depending on how good the. Uh, you know, the tour season works or whatever. Henry Weinstein, uh, Robert Whitmore, Neva Barnett is going to direct it. That's uh, what's in the source. Yeah. Um, read an article recently, and, and sometimes articles, I know, they try, but they never totally bring your thoughts to the minds of your fans and, and the listening public. You talked about racism in the music industry recently, the Village Voice. Expound on it. Let's hear it from your mouth. Uh, well, basically, I just think that the music industry is pretty openly racist. I mean, it's a shame. You know, you see a pop chart and you see a black chart, and then a lot of people will just translate pop to white or whatever. And it's like a whole lot of political things, a whole lot of manipulations that go into what's going on. And um, <clears throat> basically, like it's the BRE convention coming up, you know, I'm going to tomorrow. We'll be down there at the Black Radio Exclusive. And what I'm trying to do is just speak out to all the black radio stations. They've been pretty supportive of me. I, I want to thank them for that. But, uh, in general, we need a lot more positive rap to combat what they depict as negative rap because what you don't realize is that negative rap never needed radio to survive. So when you slack off a rap because of the negative rap, that makes the negative rap stronger because that's all the kids are going to hear because that comes straight from the streets. So you have to combat the negative with the positive as opposed to pulling back. <laughs> With rap becoming more mainstream, is the racism easing up a little, or is it becoming more mainstream? Is it my world, maybe, and I don't know? I would say rap is coming more mainstream selectively, like certain projects like a tone local become crossover. What's, what's messed up from my point of view in terms of racism, again, is uh, black radio is supposed to be the alternate to uh, pop radio. And there's certain black radio stations that won't play rap records until a pop record pop station plays, and it's like, oh, well, if they're playing tone local, I guess we can play tone local. And it's like, that's not the idea. I thought that's what we were trying to get away from. So again, you're letting them dictate and pick our heroes. And I'm not trying to knock Tone Loke or Young MC or any other rappers that have gone pop. You know, I'm definitely happy for their success. But there's a lot of brothers like myself and KRS-One and Chuck D that are trying to say something positive and trying to uplift the race and trying to create some type of mental stimulation. And we are being su suppressed, basically, through the media and through radio. And I just want to try to get that support rolling again. Yeah, because you do, you do some interesting things. You put out... Um, a single called Go See the Doctor, and, and it's interesting because you enclosed condoms with the uh, project. Um, again, I always try to tackle things from a, a odd kind of angle, an artistic angle. One thing you got to remember when you're dealing with adolescents and children, and uh, I think I'm right on the pulse in terms of dealing with them, if you're trying to make a change and try to make a difference, you have to stimulate some thought. And the only way you stimulate thought is you have to get them to listen. So a lot of teachers and a lot of lawyers and producers or whatever might not be as effective, you know, saying don't do drugs or whatever, but when Kumo D says it or 
MC Hammer, somebody said that it holds more weight because they can relate to us. And when I put lyrics in, as opposed to just dictating, you know, school teachers say it's not positive because I use a lot of profanity at that point or whatever. And I was like, I did what I had to do to get their attention, to give them the safe sex message, as opposed to just saying, hey, don't do this and use a condom. It just sounds corny. When you turn them off, they don't tune in. So the first step of making a change is to get them to listen. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by again. <laughs> it's a cool motif.